Collinwood in the year 1840, a force of evil will soon strike at the Collins family. Gerard Stiles has found the disembodied head of the warlock Judas Zachary and has been drawn to it. But he does not yet suspect that he is in danger of surrendering his whole being to a man who was executed for witchcraft in the year 1692. Good morning. I don't believe we've met. My name is Gerard Stiles. How do you do, Mr. Stiles? What is it? Is there something wrong? You were once named Miranda. Why did you say that? Why did you say my name was Mons Miranda? I, I, I don't know. I thought that I'd mistaken you for someone else. Oh, you knew someone who was named that once. No. No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Well, then I still can't understand why you said it. I don't know either. Who are you, Mr. Stiles? I mean, I know you don't live here. I'm a friend of Quentin's. I, I live at Rose Cottage. I'm terribly sorry if I've disturbed you. Please forgive me. Your name was once Miranda, wasn't it? Your name was once Miranda. Your name was once Miranda. Miranda. How long it's been since anyone called me that? Almost 150 years? Miranda. Miranda. Miranda! Wittingly or unwittingly, you have done Satan's bidding. You realize that the penalty for your sins is death. And yet you refuse to bear witness against Judah Zachary. I have told you my reasons. Now curse upon your reasons. This man is a warlock, the living embodiment of Lucifer himself. He's depraved and evil. His acts of sorcery are legend. He must be condemned. And it is your Christian duty to tell this tribunal all that you know about him. I want to, but I can't. You must. I can't because I'm afraid of what will happen. You have nothing to fear in this courtroom will stand here, draped in the protective cloak of the Almighty. Think of it, my child. Think of the golden opportunity God is giving you. He is willing to forgive your own sins. You will be immune from persecution and will be given safe escort out of this country. But only if you cooperate in helping us dispatch Judah Zachary back to the hell from whence he came. If you refuse, you will take his place in the prisoner's dock. I want to do what's right. But even if I try, I won't be able to. When I look into Judah's eyes, I'm helpless. The tribunal shall forbid him to look at you or you at him. The decision is yours. Do you want your neck on the block? No! Do you want to rot in hell? No, no! Will you stand with God? Will you stand against Satan? Will you, Miranda? Will you? Yes. Yes! Then say you will take the stand and testify against Judah Zachary. I will take the stand and testify against Judah Zachary. Hear ye, hear ye. On this fifth day of November.
November, in the year of our Lord, 1692, the Citizens' Tribunal is now in session. We shall continue the proceedings against Judah Zachary, who is here charged with the most heinous crime of witchcraft. The tribunal summons as a witness against the accused, Miranda Duval. And the incident involving Andrew Bronson occurred soon after that. What did the accused have against Andrew du Bronson? Uh, Andrew Bronson had discovered Judah's strange practices. You mean his acts of witchcraft? Yes, he had threatened to go to the authorities. And was that not the night that Judah Zachary summoned you to his house? Yes, yes it was. Tell the tribunal what transpired in his house that night. Judah was very angry. He said he believed Andrew Bronson to be a man of his word. He said that he had a way of preventing him from going to the authorities. It was the devil's way, was it not? Yes. I didn't believe it at first. But you found out later that he meant what he said. Yes. Yes, and it was horrible. Tell us what Judah Zachary did. First, he gathered together some sticks and placed them in the shape of a house. Andrew Bronson's house? Yes. And then he set fire to the sticks, and as they burned, Judah Zachary paid homage to Satan. In just a few moments, I heard the people screaming outside that Andrew Bronson's house was in flames, and all the people in the village ran to try to save the Bronson family. But we all know that they couldn't be saved. No. Andrew Bronson, his wife, and his two children died in the Holocaust, victims of a savage, evil mind. And now, Miranda, tell us of his warning to you. Speak up, my child. Judah Zachary warned me that if I ever revealed anything that I had seen, that I would be forced to watch the destruction of all those that I loved. He told me that he was a disciple of Lucifer's, and that he had been invested with powers greater than any human being had ever possessed. And when you invoked the name of the Almighty, what did he tell you? He said, God is dead. Long live Lucifer! She lies! She lies to save her own neck! I command you to tell her the truth! You came to my house of your own volition! No. I will end it! Tell her! Tell her the truth! I will end it! Tell her the truth! I Tribunal thanks you, Miranda, for your invaluable testimony. You may step down now, and the Lord be with you. Does the accused have anything to say before the tribunal presents its verdict? Judah Zachary, you have been charged with a crime of witchcraft on 109 counts. And this tribunal has found you guilty on each and every one. You will be sentenced to death in a manner prescribed by this tribunal at a later date. I hereby end these proceedings. No! And adjourn this is not the end. You cannot kill me. You may try all of you, but you will not succeed. Death is merely an extension of life. Judah Zachary will live on and he will have his revenge. your descendants shall regret this day. I say to you, choose your form of execution carefully, for you and all who follow in your line will suffer the same form of death. I will have my revenge! I will have my revenge! 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 His explanation wasn't good enough. 
He even admitted he'd never known anyone by that name. Why did I call that woman Miranda? Who is she? Why did she look so frightened when I spoke to her? And you know all the answers, don't you? You know all the answers. Why don't you open your eyes and speak to me? I can't bear it any longer. I don't even know. I don't know what's happening to me. Oh. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Quentin. I just met a friend of yours, a man named Gerard Stiles. Oh, Gerard, was he here this morning? Yes, he was. Yes. How long have you known him? Oh, about a year. Is it possible that he has mm. a psychic powers? <laughs> I think he wants to uh, make everyone believe that he has psychic powers, but I've yet to see any evidence of it. Although he is uh, very interested in the occult. Why do you ask? <laughs> I don't know. He just made a very strange impression on me, that's all. Well, you better watch out for that man. He uh, fancies himself as a ladies' man, you know. Quentin! Yes, Father? Quentin! Yes? Have you it? heard the terrible news about Roxanne? Good Lord. No one is safe outside anymore. Do they know how she was attacked? No, no. It's still a complete mystery. Strange how her death is similar to those I remember when I was a boy. Now, don't start imagining things. I'm not imagining anything. I remember the incidents very clearly. It was in the year 1797. The village was in an uproar. There was a whole series of these vicious attacks, and each victim had two marks left on his neck and suffered a tremendous amount of blood. You remember the incident, don't you? Now, Father, how would Bowery know anything about uh, what happened in your childhood? Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I have made a mistake. I... I must have been thinking of someone else. I, I've not been well since I heard the news. You must forgive me. I, I mean to take this up with the authorities. It's our tax money they're using. They should use it to settle this matter once and for all. Father hasn't been himself lately. Nor has anyone else in this house. And I think I need a drink. <laughs> Under the tree. Bowery, uh, how long have you been here? About an hour. Uh, has anyone been in here while you've been here? Only you and Dagger. Was anyone here when you came in? Yes, Gerard's dies. Are you sure uh, no one came in and left anything? Well, no. Why are you acting so mysterious? Oh, it's nothing. Wrong? No, no, no. Uh, look, will you excuse me? I'll, I'll be back later if anyone asks for me. so concerned about what is going to happen to me. If anything happens, I am in total control. I am the only living thing here in this room. And I'm the only one that has a mind that is functioning. You are a disembodied head. That's all. 
And whatever powers you may have, they will soon be mine. And you will do my bidding. <laughs> and to think that I was such a fool to be afraid of you. What a complete fool. What are you doing here? Well, I was just out for a walk. Why did you come to this particular spot? Well, I don't know. I didn't notice where I was. Are you sure walking. you didn't come here by design? You didn't know that I would be here. Well, of course not. You took me completely by surprise. Uh, Mr. Collins, if I've done something wrong... No, no, you... Uh, I'm very sorry. You haven't done anything wrong. I, I just thought that uh, you were someone else. Someone named Joanna. Yes, but uh, of course that's impossible because you are not Joanna. I'm, uh, I'm sorry for getting angry. It's all right. Mr. Collins, I still have the feeling that you're troubled by something. And... Well, does it have anything to do with this person, this Joanna? Yes, it does, but, uh, well, it's a burden that... Uh, you don't have to bear, and anyway, it, uh, it all has to do with the past, and so I think it's best forgotten. Very well, then I shan't mention it again. You know something? Well, it is very strange that you would come to this spot quite by accident. I suppose I wandered out this way because it's so quiet and peaceful. Yes. It always was. Tell me, are you happy here at Collinwood? Whatever makes you ask that? Oh, I don't know. I, I guess I've been very impressed by you. I just want to make sure that you're happy. Most of the time, I... What do you mean, most of the time? Well, it seems quite clear to me that Mrs. Collins resents my presence. Now, you listen house. to me. Mrs. Collins didn't hire you, I did. If she gives you any problem, you tell me at once. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. I'll walk you back to Collinwood. No, that's all right. I, I think I'll stay here a while longer. All right. Good day. to know what was to happen, now you know. Yes, I am to become you, and you are to become nothing. Oh, the body of Gerard Stiles will remain, but the mind of Judah Zachary will be in control. You are to become nothing, nothing, nothing!
God. It's just a bad dream. That's all it was. Or was it? Maybe it was something he wanted to tell me what was going to be. Thank you.